morning and what we what we discussed yesterday more of basics right so today's session what we will do we'll talk about a couple of more azure basics especially right so part of this <clears throat> let's recap what is tenant id So if I go to Azure Active Directory, and Properties, this is your tenant ID, correct? This is the primary requirement and once you have got this you need a subscription i've told you what is subscription and how many types of subscriptions are there please be on your class yeah right how many types of subscriptions you have and what is the use case for that in the yesterday session so quickly let's see how you can take a new subscription and a few things to remember if, if i go to subscriptions the recording is always on someone is pinging me here and there who is this krishna and recording recording will always active so currently i have a subscription right so let's say this is my one of the subscription but if at all if i need a new subscription how to take it go to your subscriptions add a new subscription right so you could say a couple of things in the subscriptions area one is free trial which i will not get because i have already utilized and pay as you go anybody can take it and for students i never tried maybe you can you guys can try it if they need some inputs maybe some of the id cards or stuff that you need to upload i don't know but this is for more, more of uh, students for 12 months. I don't think so. You'll get all the features uh, enabled on the 12 months free uh, student account, but you can try this one. So no, I normally prefer pay as you go. Once you're done with your free account, take a free, take one pay as you go account. Right, one thing what I want to show you here is, you know, you can normally. Where is my previous details? I guess it's gone. Previously, <coughs> I have saved my card details and all right. So that that might be stored in some other tenant ID, which are that is the reason why it is asking for every every other detail. So you, you just need to provide a details. But remember in this section, add a technical support. Strictly select no technical support is needed. Otherwise, what happens? You take a subscription with the default parameter, let's say te monthly technical support. They will charge you around 4,000 or 6,000. Uh, unless unless you, you submit a support ticket, you, you will get charged for every month. Reason is okay. The 
if you need any technical support, you can go back to Azure and ask for some help. So for that, irrespective of whether you are using uh, your subscription for your for your day to day business or not, how much how much resource, how many resources that you that you deployed and how much billing that you're getting doesn't matter. They, they will they will direct the standard amount standard 4000 or 6000 i don't remember but standard standard amount they, they will deduct and after six months you realize that every month they are charging 6000 or 4000 so better check this once during the technical support select no technical support is needed that's all that's all the details are more self more of self explanatory okay so you had to will you had to Record the so give me a second. Someone is being record the video. Right, okay. Sorry. Sorry. So you had to remember the technical support when you are taking a subscription. Right? So imagine I have tenant ID and I do have my subscription. Right. So what is next? All right now imagine my customer is having business or if you talk about the enterprise customer right so he has data centers and offices across the globe All right let's say us dc1 DC2 and at offices in US So this are this is the current existing customer environment. Let's say he has some data centers across the globe. Similarly, offices across the globe. So in this case, customer is looking at the Azure as a as a cloud platform within the, within the current environment. Means this is what the current setup is, and he want to he want to incorporate Azure as a medium the new cloud platform where you want to host the some of the infrastructure services or developer services or maybe some of the part of the business you want to host in the cloud so how you will decide which location that you need to select or else let's say one of these data centers you want to shut down and migrate that is another use case so how you will decide which location that you will select anybody we will select the nearest region uh, according to the geography and then we go further uh, zones but first uh, let's say us then us region uk uk region if there is a matching region for eu you have mentioned generic but then we will have to see which country region that's how we will plan right <clears throat> so now once you log in into portal.azure.com, these are the things that you will notice tenant ID and subscription ID. So once you got these two, you are open to deploy anything anywhere in the globe. Means Right. So some of those government regions, those are not visible in our portal. Apart from that, everything is visible to everyone. 
so how to how to see azure regions <clears throat> right if you look at this across the globe we have presence as far as azure regions are concerned but if you look at there are some notations here any idea what is this what is the significance of this first of all what is what do you mean by region Alex or someone is saying, right? What do you mean by region? Shrinivas in simple language, it's a geographical representation. Okay. Right? Any, any other, any other? I would say similar to your data center right hosted by azure or partner in a particular geo right so if you look at this picture some of them are simply the blue circles and some of them are holding this diamonds inside and some dotted if you look at the dotted ones announced they they are i mean they are coming soon i kind of they announced that they are coming up in those locations so they are currently building the new data centers in, in the specific regions let's say in new zealand or in taiwan israel greece these locations they are coming up with the new data centers but when you look at the west india and the central india there is a small difference any idea so if one has a zone one doesn't have a zone <clears throat> what is availability zone when i say region similar to your data center how you maintain your on-premise data center right and the same way azure will maintain the data center or some third party contractor who outsource to maintain the data center in the specific uh, country or a region or a location now the first same thing further divided into zones so what do you mean by zone when i say zone very simple within the same city Okay, so within the same city, they will construct three more buildings. Means your region is collection of three buildings. And the reason for internal connectivity so when i say internal connectivity then all the three buildings might be within this within the same street or might be across the corners within the same city we never know but what what we can say is we have internal dark fiber connectivity between the data centers so that your data replication will be faster than what you expect from the region failover when i say region failover let's say normally if you are designing something what we will do let's say my region is central india right and when i when i design the dr solution where i will put the dr location South India. Reason being geographically at least 300 miles apart. 
okay so this is the requirement for dr or bcdr correct but when i talk about high availability right when i talk about high availability let's say if one of the one of the service went down i'll not say entire data center or entire region gone maybe one of the service went down so that service has data replication enabled from this building to chennai data center so the latency the amount of data and amount of time that is required to fail over those services let's say 20 minutes means azure has to design the sla in such a way they'll have to survive even if something goes wrong within the 20 minutes they'll have to replicate all the users related to that service within the 20 minutes otherwise they'll have to give some credit back on a monthly basis every credit or every sla credit will be considered as a monthly credit so whenever your invoice is generated if something goes wrong in that month by azure they will give you some credit back for each and every component there is a different sla associated and different credit limits associated right so if a customer customer want to have this improved high availability if i have a two data centers within the same street or a different street within the same city with some dark fiber connectivity hardly you can fail over in 2 minutes so normally what you will write in your front end sales or promotional pages 99.9% sla if you are using this failover let's say or if i am using local failover let's say 99.95% SLA. and also you can charge extra extra cost for the local resources what you are deploying if you are deploying a resources with the zone redundancy you will have additional cost and also the data transfer cost also included when you are transferring data between zones one zone to another zone right means in short these are the buildings within the same city i'll say within pune they are trying to build a three data center either it can be one building or it can be three buildings currently in chennai we have only one dc but in pune if you look at they mentioned this is dotted diamond means they are coming up with the new buildings currently they have one building but they are coming up with the two more buildings and similarly in some of those locations they are trying to construct a new data centers within the same city but if you look at east us central canada central or france central north europe these locations they already got three three buildings in the same location right so reason behind reason behind announced when i say announced availability zones there is a issue in, uh, during the lockdown uk south outage in azure yeah <clears throat> if you look at i'll give you this article when this was happened during the lockdown uh, back in september so for two days users were unable to deploy delete or anything they can, they'll not be able to do anything within the uk south region whatever the resources that are up and running they are running but users are unable to deploy anything new during that time the reason is whenever you're trying to deploy it it will say that the services are currently not available azure itself dried up due to some back end let's say data center uh, cooling cooling went down or something i don't remember exactly the reason or root cause for the downtime but you see yeah. impacted storage virtual machines and a couple of more services so azure <clears throat> azure uh, 
uh, functional apps, uh, logic apps, everything went down. And the users were unable to log in or some, some users were unable to log in and create machines. Some of them are facing randomly uh, outages on the machines. Such that. So reason is some, some of the backend power outage or something, uh, backend cooling, cooling went offline or something. That is that is causing the entire region to I'll say give credit back for two days, I believe. September first week around fifth or sixth, but that happened for twice. And they decided to what I'll say, what we are looking at here. Yeah, they decided to come up with the three three buildings in each each region so that they, they can avoid these kind of situations going forward. Because when you when you are running with the one building, if something goes wrong, this is these kind of issues that are arising. The region is not completely went down. But the thing is, users were unable to or customers are unable to deploy new things. Right. After that, they recreated this uh, diagram. Uh, these notations were changed after September and October last month, last year. Right, so that is more of your regions and availability zones. And there is one more concept called region pace. What do you mean by region pace? Shrinivas, I had a quick question. Yeah. So when, when it went down, I mean, you will send us the link of the article. That's fine. But the penalty is always in the form of service credits or, I mean, sometimes they will have to really pay the money also because I saw that public health dashboard was not getting updated. So did the government put a penalty on Microsoft that it's a really a health issue? I if mean, you look at the SLA, SLA in a such a way, only credits can be given. I'll say, uh, let's say you are paying one lakh bill per month, and mm -hmm. 90, if they met, they don't met the minimum ninety five percent of SLA in that month, so your whole uh, the whole month bill is free. For that specific that component, sir. That is fine. That is fine. But if it was zero in that case, because they were not able to use the dashboard. I mean, their service was not available, correct? The end user service for dashboard was not available in the article it was written. So even in that case, uh, just a service credit will not cut it, right? I mean, that's a big issue. I mean, I just yeah, that, I saw that, that is yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that is something the internal government uh, norms and stuff that we really don't know. Or every every country has its own uh, norms, right? But in your knowledge, Azure never pays money. It just says, okay, I will give my service credit. That's it. Correct? In a, they they return the service credit uh, in every in every SLA. So that is what my explanation. I haven't seen any credit back because this is okay. this is a second time or a third time happened within last right. three years. Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. But okay. yeah, but no one no one has mentioned uh, the someone filed. Uh, a lawsuit and all against to Azure because of the business loss and all during that time. Right, right, okay. Right, so. Okay, so go back to further discussion. Region pairs. What do you mean by region pair? Maybe multiple sites on same region. Sorry? Maybe multiple sites on same region. Multiple sites on same region means, as I said, the terminology availability zone itself, multiple sites on the same region. Within the same building, or sorry, within the same city, you have a three mm -hmm. buildings. Each building we call it as a zone. So mm -hmm. in Azure world, you have only three buildings option. Means they will maintain as per best practice or maybe as per their design, they will maintain three buildings in each city just for local redundancy or high availability. That is what availability zone concept means. But when you go back to AWS, AWS in certain locations, they have a six or seven buildings or six or seven zones in each city. If you go to uh, North Virginia or any other uh, US regions in AWS, you will see six or seven buildings are available for each region. Mm -hmm. 
they have uh, but the, the the presence is vast when it comes to aws us region so that is how they designed it but in in azure across the globe the standard is three data centers in the same same city that is what is meaning of availability zone but when it comes to availability there is one more concept called availability set that we will discuss later on so what we're discussing region pairs when i say region pairs if you if you take an example of india geographically we have three locations or three regions technically correct so one is your west india another one is your central india another one is your south india. You, you are designing a solution for one of your customer considering DR or BCDR is a main criteria. So customer is agreed to deploy something in Mumbai as a primary. So what could be your secondary? You have two options here. So which one you will, you will decide? Maybe South India. Reason for high minimum 300 miles. Sorry, uh, we need minimum 300 miles of what, right? That would be uh, correct. Yes, so that is the reason they created recommended region pairs for each and every location. So you need to have okay, so you need to have this paid regions in such a way. like this or for even for central india the south india is a dr and for south india you have a two dr options in that case correct yes. if you are hosting some of the services focusing chennai as a primary data center or a primary region so you have a two secondaries but if you are deploying something on west or central side you have only one region pair which is south India. right let me go back to bcdr and dr azure region pairs within the same geography you can't you can't set different uh, geography let's say outside india I have, uh, my primary location is west india and the secondary could be i, I will choose the Singapore that 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 is not supported right that means the data sovereignty losses the whatever the business data that should stays within the country that is where your GDPR says and your data sovereignty says and respective individual country laws also says the data privacy and all says you have to keep your business data within the country and accordingly these uh, cloud cloud providers or cloud vendors they have what they have to do at least they have to come up with the two regions in every country right so one of the difficult part is singapore if you look at somewhere asia you see they don't have they don't have 300 miles apart two data centers in singapore that's the reason you, you can have a Hong Kong as a primary and maybe your secondary will be Singapore or if your primary is Singapore, your secondary will be Hong Kong. For Australia, you have two and now for Australia, two more locations. Right. And if I go to India, Central, South, West, South. Correct. So that is, that is the reason behind having a region pairs for for approved or else a standard uh, bcdr fundamental with 300 miles apart between the two regions 
right so now you picked up let's say you picked up two data centers here i want to get rid of this and i want to get rid of this and i want to get rid of this all the primaries will stay within the country or sorry within the on premise data centers and a drs i want to place it in azure as a initial go so then let's say it, it is in the east side what we will do for dr we will select the west us okay your primary is uk maybe london and for secondary what we will do uk west okay if you have data centers in eu probably you can try and bring them to uk west and if you are having a singapore then maybe hong kong as per secondary right so these are the location or else if you want to keep it here west india Right, so these are the location if I select and try to deploy it. Try to deploy Azure resources. So when I talk about Azure resources, once you have a region picked for your business, if I go to all services, these services are available in all the regions. Correct, whatever the services that are hosted here, they are available in all the regions. You can host it anywhere. Now, from where we should start these things? If I want to deploy, let's say, uh, server infrastructure, or maybe completely application services, or I just want to run the container business, we complete Kubernetes environment. Okay, zero servers, zero applications, nothing. I want to run everything on a microservices manner. So I want to deploy container applications. So where you will go and deploy. So I, did, I have decided these things, these locations. Let's say West US I have decided to deploy. So what you will do once you, once you pick the region, once you decided the region and you do have your subscription and all, the first very the very first component what you create here is us right you will you will create resource group what do you mean by resource group uh -huh. let me yeah, uh, I can't hear you clearly. Uh, maybe uh, group of resources. <laughs> so group of resources. Right, okay. Anwar, you're saying something? I guess you are on mute. Yes. Yeah, uh, so exactly like you said, I mean, unfortunately, it's group of resources. It's a logical container, which is a representation of groups. It's a, it's a container. It doesn't do anything in itself. It just separates them together, um, you know, in a logical way. Right. So let's try and understand if you are familiar with VMware. Look, I don't know how many of you are familiar with VMware. Right. So whenever you log in into vCenter. Okay. So let's imagine brand new vCenter. If you log in. Let me search. Okay. Now this is ESXA. Right, so 
if you look at, I mean, I, I hope at least few people are familiar with this. This is my V center. This is my data center, cluster, ESXi host, and virtual machine. Correct. So, what is the significance of this second one? V center is anyway. This this is where we log in and manage it. I don't know what things we perform. These are the these are the tasks that we can perform on top. Right. I don't know which language it is. It's okay. But if you see the CPD, the logical notation is here. We call it as data center. Have we have we ever performed any task on our data center level? Anyone who is working on VMware? No. no, no. You create it. Without that, you can't you can't create a cluster, you can't add a host, or you can't create a VM. That's I do agree. But what is the significance of this data center? To to represent the name of data center location. Uh, location. Uh, no, if you if you go and check the definition, they'll say logical collection of your uh, resources within the data center. What do you mean by logical collection of resources within the data center? Means let's say. Mm -hmm. You are creating a host, uh, sorry, you are adding a host, you're creating a machines, you're creating a templates, you're creating a clones, you're creating a snapshots, and you are adding a nick, removing, adding a storage, removing a storage, you're doing certain operations, correct? Okay. Within the within the vCenter. And on the back end of this vCenter, you have a PostgreSQL database. Yes. Right. Someone should give the someone should collect the information. And insert the data into a database using some mechanism called ODBC data injection into the Postgres SQL. So in that case, who will collect all this information? Your data center is a logical group of resources. It will try and collect everything from the vCenter and give it to the process where it can insert the data into your SQL servers or a Postgres Postgres SQL server on the back end. Means this is a simple logical collection medium where it is sitting ideal and simply collecting the data and give it to someone. Correct. And also, if you want to have cross uh, cross region or a cross data center uh, failover, my data migration or what I'll say. Uh, we call it as DR or migration you're trying to perform. Or, uh, or what we call it as the technical word. V motion, cross region, cross data center V motion, cross V center V motion. That is where it will come into picture. So previously, last 30 days back, the machine is in this data center. After 30 days, if you go back and check when 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 was that migrated and who migrated all these things, the data center can tell you get the data from the Postgres SQL and show it on the screen, saying if you go to uh, events and logs on the section someone initiated the migration and started so on to so and so time and completed so on so time right those things are more of driven by your data center correct similarly when it comes to resource group in azure we don't have anything as such concept in aws this is purely related to azure so when it comes to resource group it is also a logical collection of your resources what alex or Anurag said, but additionally, what it will do, let's see. Let's say I have one resource group I've created. Okay, on the back side, I have Istios on the back side. I have Australia on the back side. I have, let's say, in three, I've selected three regions. Okay. And the resource group is one logical component, what you said, and it's all in Azure. Correct. Yes, it is possible, but Srinivas, generally we don't put resources from different uh, regions in one resource group, but it is possible technically. Yes, you are right. Right now, the another direction is 
how you are managing these things in your day to day. The one way is And the second one, any other way? Yeah, that's it. I mean, Cloud Shell is other one, but that is nothing but CLI on the cloud. It's Cloud Shell. And? Terraform. Correct. So you have these many ways to manage your Azure resources. When I say Azure resources, I'm not talking about a VM. I'm not talking about a VNet. I'm not talking about a SQL database or a PaaS database or any other service bus, data factory, data lake uh, or BI tools. I'm, it, it can be anything, right? So you have these many ways that you can manage your resources in Azure. Every request, every request will go to resource group first. Okay, so whenever you're trying to deploy something, the first layer will come into picture is your resource group. Your resource group is integrated or associated, I'll not say integrated, associated with your subscription. Right, what is my subscription? It's a billing mechanism. Sorry? Billing mechanism. So, Shriniva, sorry to interrupt. Uh, where you have written resource group, should you not be writing resource manager, not resource group? No, the technical word is resource group. Okay. Okay, the technical definition itself is resource group. If I go here, resource group. It is, it is not my own uh, writings. It is whatever the Azure is saying. That is, that is what I'm writing, right? No, 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 no. I was just saying Azure Resource Manager is also a term we read sometimes, right? A, uh, ARM. Yeah. So that's what I thought. Yes, yes, yes. That is different. ARM templates, okay. right? Azure Resource Manager. Previously, that was not there. In, uh, I guess, around 2016 or, yeah, 2016, they introduced ARM templates, resource groups, and all. Uh, before that, everything is classic. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, where is my properties? Okay, so this is my unique identification here, correct? Within the portal, this is my unique identification and I can take multiple subscriptions by the way, correct? So this is under this unique identification tenant ID. This is my billing. So when you take a subscription, subscription has few things, let's say, model pay as you go and then currency INR right and let's say address if they want to send you the hard copy of your invoice right you'll have if in the, in the large uh, large enterprises you'll get an invoice mailed and accordingly uh, the invoice will be processed by your purchase order and uh, just for record keeping you'll get an invoice so these things you'll get along with the subscription correct now your resource group let's say i'm creating my resource group in east us Right, so if you look at my subscription, it is currently set to INR because whenever I select the country and provide the country specific card details, if you have an international card you're trying to give it, it won't activate. Right, you selected your country as India and then you try to give you some MX card which you have taken in US, that, that won't work. So you'll see those kind of errors when you're taking a subscription. So that is set to INR. 
based on your country what from where you are accessing and when you're creating a resource group you can create anywhere in the globe within the within the azure you have let's say 50 regions across the globe you can create anywhere your resource can your resource group can go and sit now this is a global component means it doesn't have any location preference even though it is sitting in the east us it is spread across all the regions right and it can manage it can track if you deploy something in india it can track it if you deploy something in australia it can track it if you deploy something in us it can track it and what it will do it will give it to your subscription for further processing let's say if a billing needs to be processed so it will collect all the resources that are deployed across multiple regions and give it to your subscription accordingly subscription will uh, will complete the billing process the billing mechanism will work under subscription right now if you if you need to understand more in detail let's say i have created one virtual machine here let's say that is charging you two rupees per hour just an example same sort of machine same os same size if you deploy in australia you may get it for two and a half rupees and same machine same size if you're trying to deploy these prices are region specific prices any any price what you see in azure they are bounded to region they are not a common price for every resource across the globe okay i don't know the the factors behind the pricing is maybe n number of reasons business model the based on country the taxation amount of investment amount of profit that you're getting those prices are auto calculated prices you will see some variations over the over the period of one year or two years but same machine if you deploy in multiple locations you will definitely see price variation in our multiple regions accordingly the resource group should remember those things or should collect those things and say and give it to subscription then accordingly your billing will be calculated let's say in this location you deployed some machine today and deleted in the evening in this region you deployed one machine in the first of february and you keep on running this for next 30 days and in this location every day morning nine o'clock you're deploying something evening five o'clock you're deleting so those things will be collected by your resource group and tracked by your resource group and hand out to the billing understood also if you are deploying something from portal i do agree i do accept cli i do accept and PowerShell, you can you can deploy from any any of these tools. Let's say currently I have a portal, right? So let me go ahead and create resource group. Okay, so East US underscore broad resource group one. I'm just creating it on East US. So what is the significance of these tags? Anybody? More of self-explanatory words you can give here, right? Up to 256 characters and up to 512 characters. So let's say, Right, so these things we can give it over here. Um, X, Y, Z person. Great. Means, let's say under this resource group, if you are trying to deploy, if you have a multiple business units, you're trying to deploy some of the resources belongs to 
belongs to a specific business, then the business owner details and rest of the information will try and populate over here. And also in every resource that you deploy inside this resource group, we'll ask them to add some of the standard tags so that we can easily identify which server belongs to which unit within the Azure. Right. And if there is a new division altogether, if you want to uh, run, it, run it differently, obviously we'll recommend if it is from the scratch, we'll recommend you try and use the new subscription so that your, your utilization can be tracked separately in the form of your separate subscription and a separate billing. That is also possible. But how you will integrate services between the two subscriptions? There are, there are ways to integrate. So you can you can share the resources across uh, across the subscription, across the region. You, you can have a communication between your resources irrespective of whether they are inside your portal or outside your portal. If the resources are inside the Azure, you can have a communication around those resources. Okay, For example, your VNet pairing. Right, your VNet can be within your portal, or you, know, you might have a two different customer portals. One is unit, business unit, a different business unit portal. Another one is a specific another business unit portal. Still, you can have a resource communication or internal communication between the resources, irrespective of what subscription that you are using. Because at the higher level, you will get an individual billing, and at the at the ground level, you have you can run your business like one entity. I'll show you. I'll show you more in detail when we're talking about the what I'll say, uh, vnets and subnets and region pairs. Sorry, yeah, pair, pair, pairing, pairing uh, the resources within the region and across the region. So that time we'll discuss more about the design and stuff. Now, <clears throat> in this case, what else? What else we need within the Azure fundamentals? We got these three things then afterwards where we need to start with the deployments okay so first uh, uh, after deciding the the regions uh, mm -hmm. we have to establish the network uh, setup um, in azure and then connectivity between azure and the physical data centers uh, first network right. then vms you know. right so considering the rest of the audience the, the perspective is little different okay so let's say if you are looking at the infrastructure perspective when i say infrastructure perspective you might be cloud admin role or architect role related to infrastructure so our main focus area is infrastructure in that case what we will recommend let's say i want to deploy something in azure so what we will do we'll start with the network topology first and then we'll start with the subnets and all then we'll try and deploy resources inside subnets okay and what you said the focus will be around network how you will integrate that with the on-premise how you can stabilize the environment within the network standpoint then you try and use the resources however you want right this is infrastructure perspective if we look at the different dimension to it, there are few developers. Okay. They, they are more and more interested in development environment. They don't know what is infra and what what needs to be done in, in terms of infra standpoint, nothing. So if they want to start the start their learning in Azure, how they will from where they will start. Right, for them. Platform as a service, some runtime environment just. Okay, for them, a simple app service can help them or a simple functional app can help them. 
or a simple pass SQL can help them. Or in other words, a simple AKS. AKS come under this AKS or AKS is still considered infra? No, AKS cluster can help them. But the reason is in order to deploy any any of these things, you really don't require your network topology knowledge. These are more of pass services. You can simply deploy it without without even knowing what's going on on the back end because we are not interested in the back end what's going on. We are more interested on the front end how we can de deploy or develop the new things and get the new product into market. In that case, I'm, I'm least bothered about what's going on on the back end. Right, that is a prospect of the developer side. But if you are if you are looking at the architect who want to stabilize both the things, then the challenge. You must know this, and you must know this both. Correct. If you are admin, try and concentrate this area. It will be okay. If you are a developer, start learning these things at first stage. You'll be okay. But if you are looking at this role, then you need to understand as an overall solution perspective, you need to do all the stuff. It, that can be this, or it can be infrastructure stabilization, both. Fair enough? Now, kind of keeping all this in mind, from where we should start, as I said, we might have seen the earlier videos in uh, YouTube, as well as the previous, uh, uh, previously uploaded demo videos within the YouTube, right? So my considering my background, my focus area as a infrastructure admin, what I have mentioned here majorly, I will concentrate more on networking at first stage because I'm not a developer to jump onto the AKS cluster and try and show you the how you can create a Docker file and how you will define the pipeline to uh, run a Docker image and how, how you can throw that image into Azure Container Repository then how you will deploy that into AKS cluster and run the business. No, because that is not my day-to-day -day job or that is not my focus area as a infrastructure guy, right? So <clears throat> we do cover those things, but that is from infrastructure perspective, not from the pure developer perspective, correct? So considering this, where we will, where we will start, we'll start from the networking and then machines will not spend much time on virtual machines i believe everybody knows by this time how to deploy a machine how to manage the machine how to troubleshoot the machine right but we'll try and spend some time in a different way how you can manage these things in terms of in terms of azure day-to-day -day operations and differently the things what you are doing in your lab with the free account that is different Things what you are gonna do in your customer environment when you are working for any customer in real time, that's little variation is there. I'm not saying the patching and other stuff, the rest of the operations that we are performing. And the storage, then we'll continue with the rest of the pass services. Right, after, after the networking, uh, machines, storage, databases are done, we'll come, to, we'll come to your app services. But if you are a developer, the focus area first will be these things will come into this at first stage and later on yes i need to integrate this app service with the database which is running on some vnet then we'll start learning about vnet and we'll start learning about sql those things okay so anyway if you if you come through that direction or you go through this direction ultimately the, the thing is you need to understand overall as a solution correct so even even within the infrastructure Right, so normally what I will portrait here, I guess Anurag, you have seen this in the previous video in the YouTube, right? If you are, why why the network at first stage? Why can't we learn the storage at first stage? Or why can't we learn the virtual machines at first stage? You can learn, right? So let's imagine you, you are constructing a home, individual house in your plot, what you will do? You will do the basement at first stage and then your walls. And then finally comes into your interior part. Correct. So interior will always change based on your 
test. Correct. So now if you consider this as a Azure, if you want to learn the outside one time basement is your network. Once you create a network, you are not going to change it anywhere. Right. And then your storage and virtual machines, let's say your walls. Inside your applications or your past services or your SaaS services based on the based on the customer requirement, based on the audience taste, this will keep on changing. Similarly, based on the customer requirement, you can flexibly change these things. But the network part, you can't really change it. Once you design, you design. If you want to redefine it, you need to define all together a new solution and try to move the things one by one. You can't you can't move in a one go. Right. Because let's say I've created a network where I can fit around 20,000 IPs means around 20,000 servers. I don't have a 20,000 servers in a customer environment. Let's say the reservation is up to 20,000 servers. And I do have a couple of servers, let's say 10%, 10 2,000 servers are already deployed and up and running. Now, all together, the customer is asking for a new network design. Do you think it is that easy? After bringing all the stuff back to Azure and redefine the network topology and the VIP those servers. Right. Even if you deploy five servers and try to change the IP address schema and all, you will see how, how difficult it is to manage those, those things in real time. Right. So your network design must be in a proper way. It, you must design with the with the compatibility or with the uh, consideration of on premise. And if in your on premise you already have a full fledged setup, let's say your on premise or your your existing business is almost like thirty years old, and every office you equipped with some IP range. So the new IP range which you are going to propose for your Azure, it must be some unique. Right, IP conflict should not be there when you are integrating with your on premise. How you will integrate? You have multiple ways. So, uh, lots of multiple ways. Let's say site to site VPN tunnel, or people can use point to site if it is of a fairly small environment, or if it is a very large environment and the bandwidth is a constraint, you can use Express route. Right, you can integrate with your on premise from the Azure and access the resources seamlessly within the private network from any of your on-premise or remote office network that those things will try and cover. So our focus area will be networking at first stage that we're gonna discuss tomorrow. Yeah, Srinivas, uh, yeah. I'm very, very much fresher in networking. It is not my core area. I humbly request to please go slowly in networking. Okay. I'm scared even, of networking, to be honest. Even, the, even this is not my primary focus area. I'm a VMware admin. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so you will, I'll try to I'll try to cover as much as I can in terms of network standpoint. But yes, definitely we'll cover we'll cover a couple of things within the network slowly. We'll come to know. Right. So from tomorrow onwards, we'll try and cover those things. So I need at least 15 to 18 hours in networking. I'm not saying uh, purely I'll spend on networking concepts. Parallelly, we'll try to cover within the within that uh, deployments. We'll try and cover virtual machines in within the virtual machines, various types of deployments, what we can do and how you can operate in your day to day, what kind of issues that you can get. Those things we'll try and cover during this discussion. And afterwards, VMs, I don't need much time, roughly around three to five hours. Then I'll talk about storage. Then I'll talk about databases, app services, at least three hours I need minimum. And then we'll talk about uh, security, your ID, 
then we'll talk about automation will you have a session on billing uh, a yes. detailed one optimization cost management uh, at last okay yeah i have one more quick question in your experience in most of the interviews junior or senior level i mean i i feel networking is the main area right wherever no the discussions start no no that depends networking okay. is not a key area yeah? if you are looking at the infrastructure the things what you don't know you feel like a key area things you know you okay. feel like it's simple oh that's okay true true <laughs> right then we'll talk about devops and we'll talk about a case Right. This is the segregation. Even if you go back to the course content and see, I haven't mentioned the number of hours what I've spent over there, but overall, I, I would need at least 40 hours roughly if you calculate all the stuff. So, this is a plan for the next around 30 or 40 days. Roughly, today's second session, right? Let's consider another 40 days. Right, so Srinivas, for video access, uh, we have to first make first installment payment and only then we get access. How yes. does that work? Right, yeah. So uh, we still have uh, a few minutes, okay, around five or six minutes. Let's see if uh, people have any questions, then uh, we, I'll tell you the payment and stuff later on. Any questions so far what we discussed? I, I, I know this is more of theoretical boring, but still we can't really help you on these things because when you are practicing for yourself, you will directly jump onto the labs and do some stuff. But if some if something goes wrong, you cannot go back and ask me. After two months, some people call me saying, you never told me the subscription and I've deployed the resources. I went on a leave and after a week, I see around 8,000 bill I got. Now what I do? I paid it twelve thousand, and you are you are charging twenty thousand. You, you better you 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 tell me upfront. I'll pay twenty thousand. I said that is your credit card, your Azure portal, your practice. What I can do then that? Right. So you people be careful when you are playing with the Azure or any other cloud platform, especially when you add your credit cards. And also, especially when you are generating some security access keys and security keys and integrating with the automation tools. If you expose those keys, then over the night, your bill can shoot up to one lakh. Right, your access key and secret key or a key in AWS and your service principle is key app registrations and service principle is key where you don't need to share your password if you have those keys you can deploy from third party app so they will utilize your your uh, portal to run their business over the night and after after 12 hours or so when the billing is recalculated you will see spike so be careful on these things when you're practicing the things and once you're done with the lab try to delete everything what you have in the lab don't keep it. Okay. Even you're done with one or two hours practice, it's good. Still, I'll recommend delete it and you recreate it in the next next time when you're trying to practice it. Don't keep it. Okay, I'm done halfway and let's continue tomorrow. So then you you are actually utilizing your resources for a one hour and unnecessary paying for next 23 hours. Because everything is hourly building here. Okay. So please keep in mind these things rather than crying afterwards. Okay. So, yeah. is, um, my free subscription is not actually applied to create a new free subscription. You are not audible, man. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I'm, I can hear you, but I, yeah. I can't hear you clearly. Okay. Can you can you take uh, your microphone? Can you, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, can you hear me? No. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, my free subscription is completed with my mail ID. Uh, will you able to give me free subscription with my different mail ID? Is that possible? No. Your free subscription is 
exhausted then what you are saying I, yes um uh, can i create a new field subscription with my new if, if you name? have a new credit card if you have a new credit card with the new email id you can you can get one more free trial Okay. Right. I would right. recommend. I mean, don't uh, saying something you don't have. Ah, my it might be it might be they have introduced the pan card verification and all on the backend database. If that is matching, it won't allow you to yeah. give you a new free trial. Okay. Okay. So better go with the pay as you go account. Hardly you will get a two hundred or three hundred rupees per month if you practice the whole month. Otherwise, it's zero Definitely. billing. You won't get any bill unless until you start using it. Okay, so better take a pay as you go account in that case, and keep in mind, don't don't leave the resources open and don't expose no. the security keys open, and try to delete the resources when you're done with the practice. Okay, right. So, Abdul, Abdur, bye, bolo. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No issues. Yeah, I got to know. I mean, through debit card. I mean, can we open the account? Actually, uh, is it allowed? You can uh, create your own account. No, no, no. Uh, you, uh, you, I mean, as you were saying, the beginning beginning of the class, credit card is must. Right. Uh, people who are not having credit card, then how do they? Uh, for, for first time, first time, you definitely need a credit card. Okay. 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 Afterwards, you can remove that and add a new debit card. Oh, but one time when you are enrolling, you must need that, I believe, right? So, otherwise, what else? I'll suggest go and submit a case here. You can support. Okay. 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 Submit a case, then they'll guide you what they can. Do. Okay. People who are not having credit card. Yes. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, for the videos, I guess who is asking Anurag, right? So for the videos, uh, I'll I'll say whoever is interested to continue the sessions, so you go to vmu.com. Let me sign out myself. Okay. So come on. Right, so you have to register yourself and whoever is enrolling, please type Azure 18 and space your name and give your, your email ID and password, right? This is how you need to enroll it because every time when I try to share a videos, I need to assign it to a specific people on a private mode. So I need this ID. So I'll, I'll search for this ID and your name so that I can share the videos after you've done the payment. And payment, I guess everybody aware, what I mentioned in the channel or what I mentioned everywhere in the portal, it's 12,000 and you can pay the first installment of 6,000 today or by tomorrow. So tomorrow also you can join, it's no problem in that. But by tomorrow, you can, you can do the payment and tomorrow by evening, I'll share the videos. So I would request everybody to enroll here with this manner put azure 18 on your name and enroll with your email id once you log in inside you just search for like this you just search for my profile and the, there is a follow button just click on it i'll get a notification so that i can i can follow back and share the videos Right. Just do this and ping me on the WhatsApp group. I'll enable the I'll enable the WhatsApp group for the uh, when two-way messages. So you guys can let me know on the group itself so that I can share the videos by tomorrow evening. So I'll I'll keep the today's recording also. Here, but I will share once I got the details from everybody. Shrini was how to pay like uh, uh, Google Pay on th which number? Just all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll ping you the details. I'll ping you the details in the group. Okay. So I don't know how many people will enroll. If we have a couple of more people in the group, we'll try and find find out. But I'll share the banking bank account details or else the Google Pay. These are the two options. 
All right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I will stop here and then we'll, we'll connect back tomorrow same time and we'll start with the networking, fundamental networking that we will discuss tomorrow. Okay, Srinivas, uh, yeah. I have a small question in addition to my first question. Uh, is Windows administration is also required? Uh, is, is it a prerequisite of uh, Azure administration? Windows not say window, window MCA, MC, uh, MCA, uh, what was the certification? Microsoft Windows mm -hmm. Administrator. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's... that is not required. At least okay. if you can do your day-to-day uh, -day activities by yourself, that is enough. Okay. Like a .NET knowledge is also required. Is... If you are a developer perspective, yes. Yeah, that will that is the added advantage for you. No, not for the developer perspective. In the infra side, I mean, do we need to have the uh, uh, those knowledge like a C++ C++ knowledge also required? No, for not the really. Infra? Not really. Not. Okay. 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 So if you are a pure developer, then I, I would say any of those uh, development development skill is mandatory along with this Azure skill. Uh, with the pure administration of op opportunities are available, right? I mean, in the infra side. Uh... Yes, opportunities are there for admin roles, especially mm -hmm. from three to six mm -hmm. years. Three to six years. Okay. If we clean that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, guys. Others, please be on mute. Yeah, tell yeah, me. Somebody's... Yeah, tell me. Uh, these Azure infra infrastructure comes under the CSOPs or DevOps or I mean, I'm not getting the correct point. Administration is one zero four. You are active. saying like uh, these infrastructure comes under the DevOps. I mean, no. uh, related to Kubernetes deployments and everything. I'm no. not getting the point. I mean, is, really, is this related to DevOps or CSOPs? CSOPs. Whatever the things that we are discussing here, majorly in, in terms of CSOPs in AWS and in Azure, we call it as uh, administrator. CSOPs is a term where you will use it in AWS. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, so if you're comparing with that, yes, it, we are talking more about CSOPs and DevOps is different. At the end, I'll, I'll help you on the DevOps as well. But that is more of infrastructure perspective, how you can set up a pipelines, how you can run the pipelines, how you can deploy the things into Azure. But I cannot show you how you can develop the things. If already someone developed the code, how you can deploy it, how you can manage it, that I can help you with. I mean, uh, you are you are going to cover only Kubernetes or uh, really, um, I mean other tools also. I mean, Jenkins, what else you're looking for? Okay. What else you're looking for? I mean, uh, are you going to discuss about uh, I mean, pipelines also, Azure pipelines and Azure everything. DevOps pipelines? I will discuss. I will not discuss Jenkins, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, and all the stuff. I will not touch those things. Okay. 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 That is not part of Azure. That is purely DevOps. Okay. Okay. Right? Got it. Yeah. Got it. Applications, Srinivas, uh, certification point of view. Uh, will you provide any documents? I mean, to prepare for the certification. Uh, documents won't help you. Even in the certification exam, they will pop up a screen and ask you to do some lab. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll not say all the questions are lab related, but <coughs> bare minimum they last two three questions in the lab and more weightage to that. Okay. Okay. But uh, what I can do is I can I can help you with the scenarios and I can help you with the videos. And if at all, if needed, as at some some point of time, I'll share the portal details. Okay, URLs where you can refer some more information, but I'll not be able to share any of those PPTs and all. I don't have anything as such. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. So, guys, uh, I'll let you go and have another class at eight thirty. So, I'll I'll connect back tomorrow with you all. And if you have more questions, we can discuss and. I'll try to help you out. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks right? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Bye bye.